Jeff, what's up, man? Hey, Joe. Good How's to see you. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? Uh, excellent, man. Everything sounds like it's going good with you. You got with your new material. You got you got a lot going on. Yeah. Every every once in a while, it builds up, and yeah, you get a certain amount of. It's like I gotta go in the recording. I love being in the recording studio. It's yeah. like favorite place because it's just like a kid in the candy store. I wish I could just live in there. You know, it's fun. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to getting into the albums and, and, you know, we've caught up periodically over the years, but now that we've kind of ceremoniously hit this point where new material is out, live shows are picking up. I got to know, how did you make it through the pandemic and how good does it feel to have all this material out now? Yeah. Um, it's the music the music kept us going through the pandemic. I think the music and the people, um, that was a powerful connection and, and especially when we started coming back to the audiences. And I think we all learned how much we love, what we really love, I think really resonated and really became evident for a lot of us, you know, af during and after the pandemic. And so, you know, we kind of all f fell in love with music again in some ways. And, and it was so fun to see the excited audiences when we were first coming back. And, and so uh, playing at the Green Lady Lounge um, has just helped me a lot keeping going and it's, it 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 uh, encourages me to write new music, uh, and so this year, um, I've been trying to write. Just in the past, just in 2024, I've been trying to write like a at least maybe a song a week or or every couple weeks. I'm I'm doing the uh, Jeff Shirley get Jeff Shirley trio right now. So it's guitar, upright bass, and drums. So it's Seth Lee on upright bass and Antonio Reyes on drums most of the time. And we're Tuesdays from six to ten. So um, just you know getting to play there and getting to play live, uh, you know, keeps it, keeps it fun. And, and, uh, just watching everyone on, on YouTube, watching all the new, the new, uh, generations coming up is inspiring. And, and, and of course the veterans, I got to see Herbie Hancock recently. And, and so just trying to be inspired, stay positive and absolutely. Well, so you, your albums, um, Contigo and modes of nature are on ARC. How did you strike up that relationship with Christopher Burnett and ARC? Well, I knew of him in town, just being a musician in town. I knew, I knew Chris was an amazing sax player. And then when I saw some of my friends, like I was playing at YJ's and when I saw some of my friends and some people I knew had albums on ARC, it was just in, a little bit in the earlier days back then, I guess. But I said, well, this is nice, a collective where, um, where we can kind of help each other. We can kind of promote each other and kind of figure out the crazy uh, there's a lot of you know the music business side there's a lot um some confusion there and we all want to do it right and so um it's nice to have a mentor like chris burnett and to be able to release things on the arc and um and he he pretty much lets the artists you know release um what they want he helps provide the isrcs and, and the upcs and, and guidance and things like that so it's kind of fun to be a part of a collective with some uh, amazing uh, musicians on there so there's some exciting things ahead for that so i just you know i uh, i talked to friends and, and they were releasing things so i just reached out to him and i said is this a possibility and uh and he was interested and and so that was um point of the story and uh and he he helps get get the catalog in different places like uh, the kansas historical society and he just he's always doing things behind the scenes and he's one of these people that i'm always amazed at his social media skills he just he's always seemed to be social media savvy and just he's he's been releasing music independently you know uh since the the nine mid 90s or you know since uh the early you know long time since the early days of mp3s so here's someone that's been releasing music independently for so long so it's it's great to get to work with him and yeah he's are. wonderful for sure and he is so, such a a beacon of jazz not only locally but around the globe so that's a wonderful place to be at for sure so i'm curious this seems as though with having two albums out you've been kind of sitting on a deluge of material and it's become these albums but i'm going to let you tell me exactly whether my perception's correct or not yeah i always feel like i'm um i'm late i always feel like gosh i haven't released anything and you know so there's always this kind of nagging a little like last time i released blue gold and and i think i got in the studio six months later you know and so here it is just about two years 
um, later after the release. So it's something I've been working on in the studio for uh, a, you know a year and a half. Over you know busy schedules and and it wasn't like I was pounding away the whole time, but it's it's taken some time. And so, um, but the, the deluge. Um, it's it's like there's one of the reasons for the two albums is as uh, this is the first time I really want to do vinyl, so I'm going to try to release at least one one vinyl. And so um, vinyl has, as you know, has a, some limitations as far as how much music you can put on each side because to get it loud enough and yeah. because it has to do with the grooves of the records. And so since you know, so I wanted to release vinyl, and I thought, how fun would it be to release? two two different albums and make it like be a surprise so i i really i promoted contigo and was telling everyone about contigo and then on the day of the release it's like hey surprise two albums and um and i i think i just um i kind of operate in that way where uh you know after a year or two you have a certain amount of material and it's it's really hard to just say um on the, you know of course not everything gets recorded but um you know, you have a lot of tracks where he's like, I just, I want to get this recorded, this song, I, you know, I want to record this someday, uh, and not every song I do record, but I would say, you know, at least maybe 75% of the compositions I like to try to get, get on, on recording somehow, and, and that's when it's fun, I love getting, getting, getting the tracks down, and then seeing, does it need anything, this, this last two albums, does it need any sprinkles, does it need anything, that's one of the reasons I love being in the studio, kind of thinking, could something else add to this this album, this almost like a, a studio album? And I think next album, it may be more bare bones, just guitar, bass, and drum, maybe a lot of one-shot takes. But I also, I just, I can't help but be inspired by a band like Steely Dan, where they layer things. And some of my favorite music is is like beautiful studio albums that are layered. And so part of me is reaching for that and and just join enjoying being in the studio enjoying adding another layer at times and things like that so it was really just excuse to to build up um you know uh, you know 14 songs and i think they're all quality i think you know i stand behind the quality of of all of them you know so i think i think they're all different and good in their own way hopefully so and and your recordings always have a very clean, powerful sound to it. There's always such a it just feels like there's just a feel to it. And and it's always a good feeling. So I'm curious when you go in, what is what is kind of as the architect of this sound? What do you what do you what were you ultimately going for with these two albums? Well, thank you very much. And and thank you um, for having me uh, again. This is this is all, this is a treat. I love I love getting to do this. This is like the thrill. And um, and I think the goal was just, um, you know, sometimes you feel like your chops. Sometimes I feel like like I can play. I can express myself on the guitar in a way that I couldn't a few years ago. I've done a lot of gigs in the past past few years. So I felt like part of it is trying to capture where I'm at. Um, musically, what I can do on the instrument that's a little different than what I can do, showing different sides of myself, exploring different sides of myself that I haven't explored. And, um, and so, but then it, again, it always feels like, um, like I want to, I want to share where I'm at today. Even like, sometimes it's like, well, even a year ago, I, was it better? Was it worse? You know, it's, it's, it's a paradox if one tries to get too much into where one is. Um, I think maybe you would agree I'd love to hear your some of your uh, opinions um, as well on these, but it can be a real um, hornet's nest to get too much into. Is it better then? Was it better now? But you just want to capture where you're at and have fun with the art and just you know, um, giving your giving ourselves a chance to to have some fun with the art and make some art. And so part of it was kind of showing where I'm at with the tech technicality aspect and and also the songs this time. The songs were very much had been uh, performed a lot more than previous albums. Um, like um, like previous albums were more like rehearsal, you know, rehearsals, and you go in. But this uh, these albums were more like these songs were performed live and really worked out live um, before the studio. Uh, and there's some I think there's a balance there too about going into the studio when the songs are still somewhat fresh you know like after you may have played the songs with your group 
three to three to six months, that might be the sweet spot. But you know, you want to go in where everyone's still feeling fresh. They have something to say on this song, and they like it. And and so Dwayne at at Weights and Measures, um, it's recording studio. He's a big part of the sound, and I hear him getting better and better too. When he mastered the last uh, album, I was I felt I was just kind of blown away, and I felt like I felt like the jump from the mixing stage to the mastering stage uh, was was really clear and fun to hear. I think I think he's getting better and better, and and it's fun to to work with him. So, and I think that's the thing that you brought up is that these albums successively show this evolution of sound that and and being a part of the Kansas City scene you're 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 always going to take in elements of jamming at a place like the Green Lady on a regular basis and the influence of all the musicians you're around and i think a lot of that blends in to who you are but i think there's a level of originality that you immediately know that when you put on a Jeff Shirley album that it's you this is who it is. There's not, you know, because sometimes I'll find myself listening to albums and I'm like, man, who is that? But I know when I listen to you, like, I know it's you. I just, it just pops out. So um, I don't know if that's something that you've thought about having your own unique voice and way that you phrase and put it together. But what what's your philosophy on that? Thank you. And I think maybe for Maybe that's uh, for in, in good ways and bad ways, maybe Rec recognizable doesn't always mean, you know, good, but to be recognizable, um, that's that's a huge compliment. And, and I think sometimes for better, and for for worse, maybe um, I try to focus on on the better and uh, the. Um, the um, but going back to that, you said. Basically. Uh, sum it up again. Sorry, one time. Um, what was the, some of the question? Sorry. One, oh, one, yeah. No, no, no. I, I thought you were thinking for a second. No, I was just saying that, you know, you have a very unique sound, but all of the other voicings of musicians on the Kansas City scene, especially being at a place like the Green Lady, come in. So there's this nice amalgamation. So I was basically asking you, what's kind of your overall philosophy on where your voice is right now in 2024 and how you approach the way that you lay down your tracks? Yeah. And I was also... Um, the and it's also pushing myself in the in this i like to push myself in the studio or take chances in this to me that's what's fun is taking some chances in the studio um trying to reveal be more authentic to myself i want to go back to my roots i like simplicity but i also like complexity sometimes and i feel like in the studio it's it's fun to take chances and almost unlike anywhere else i can i kind of feel like my own boss a little bit because almost everywhere we go we feel like we have someone that you know uh we love them but there's people that we're trying to please and and we're trying to you know we don't want to mess things up and i i feel like in the studio um i just feel like i don't have to answer to anyone per se which is a it's a freedom that i like i don't want to abuse but um it's like where i try to take all the everything i remember from growing up and the music i grew up when i was the music I heard growing up, you know, um, in the eighties and, and nineties and, and every time I've inspired by a jazz musician or trying to capture that feeling, you know, like, like trying to replicate a feeling is, is a hard thing, but it's like, if this song doesn't, does it give me that feel? you know, it's kind of exciting if a song can give a certain vibe or a feeling almost every time I think, um, is the, is the goal. And, um, because sometimes we get a vibe when we listen to a certain song or and it's almost like we can get there almost every time we listen to it. It's almost like baked into the recipe. And um, I love the idea of, of being able to replicate something like that. And, um, you know, just playing with the musicians over the past few years, we've grown together. It's almost, you know, our personalities. Sometimes I get along. Some musicians you get, you know, you, you play with, but you may not interface with them a lot and some musicians for some reason you just you get along with them so well you want to joke around and and so there's um the relationships have grown and so we know each other better we can support each other in different ways and i play with some really supportive amazing amazing people so it's really like they did it's really just like highlighting them and like getting some amazing people in one place and and just letting them do their thing and with a small framework which is really nothing i mean the songs are are skeletons and and so it's 
it's just really getting them together, getting getting the the people together that that you think can really do it. And um, yeah. So let me ask you this: What are you hoping the listener gets from these albums? Um, I hope the listener uh, likes it enough to to give it a um, more than one listen would be would be great. Like if if they could if it could grow, if someone could give it a chance to grow on them, or even if one, it just feels like if one person likes it, um, that really is that's that's a huge for me. You know, um, I I love it when even one person uh, likes it in some small way. That means the world to me. And you know, we're making music, you know, for ourselves, you know, I, I like to make music uh, that I like, and then I like to make music, hopefully the other musicians like it, and, and hopefully the audience really likes it, and um, it's fun to be there right with the audience, because you can try out these songs, and you can see how they like them, and, and they're, um, they're so sweet, and I've heard the audience doesn't I listen to Rick Rubin sometimes, but he's got a great book on creativity, and he says sometimes the audience doesn't know what they what they want, but they know it when they hear it. It's like they can't articulate what exactly they want, but they know it when they hear it. And there's this kind of a group, the audience has kind of like a collective um, consciousness to some extent. And so trying to give the, and then playing for uh, not just myself or the audience or the musicians, but something bigger, you know, like, like, you know, to try to, you know, maybe please uh, uh, the creator in some small way. I mean, that would be, that would be huge. And I really, that helps me to get myself out of the center a little bit sometimes is like, no, this is all bigger than me. This is, uh, this is, you know, this is amazing clock, you know, almost a clock, amazing clock. We seem to be in that, that runs so perfectly to the second. And uh, for some, someone like that, a designer, like I just, um, you know, just, it'd be, it would be awesome to, uh, please in some small way, you know, I'm, you know, um, the, the Supreme. So. Absolutely. So you're obviously at the green lady quite a bit, but what are you got planned for album release shows, anything here in the warm months, what's going on? Oh yeah. And if I could mention, I did recently get some music in a movie. I was kind of excited about that. It's an independent movie called the people's joker. Yeah. And, um, it, it'll, it's, it's done a theatrical release all around, the nation and um so i got to do some a little bit of jazz on there and some electronic uh, music cool. um and so um i really like to prom i really like to think about um a month ahead before the album comes out and a month after I, i'm not always perfect on these but you know we've been working on getting this you know a lot of it is the business side so a lot of you know, the past year longer it's just like weekly meetings and weekly trying to push things forward and but i really like to go heavy a month before the release and a month after just to give myself some sort of parameters like this isn't just an endless promotion but really trying to do as much as i want to do really in that month before and the month after so i'll probably try to do um try to get it on you know try to just reach out to some different people and get it on some different maybe do some put, put a little money into a little promotion maybe um work, you know, still getting the, uh, the physical copies. I'm trying to have a vinyl and a CD, um, just kind of like a local party, like, uh, June 15th and Mac and park trying to, trying to do something like that. Um, so there might be like a, like kind of just a small party June 15th at Mac and park around. So, um, stay updated for that. I'll try to put info out for that where we just kind of listen to the music, maybe have some snacks and, and, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, going on, doing some doing some other radio uh, spots and uh, just reaching out. And then what else? I try, I like to do, uncon you know, a little unconventional maybe, you know, make some videos, you know, make, uh, make a little content. Today's artist just has to kind of like make content, trying to make content, you know, every week and at least something. And, and uh, it doesn't always have to be maybe, uh, you know, jazz content but i think people want a window into each other's lives a little i think we're getting a window into um who we all are on a more authentic basis so i think just being authentic with ourselves and, and putting some information you know just trying to be steady with some some content and things and um yeah and just uh what else you know just doing some of the final work on the album like you know, registering it 
in all the right places, ASCAP, and you know some of the stuff that you don't have to do at the fort. You know, just making sure the copyright and the ASCAP and some of the paperwork is all done. So that'll be the next month probably. Cool, man. Well, this has been great, Jeff. It's so great to catch up with you. I love the new material. Hopefully, I'll run to you again out on the live scene. Keep doing the great work, man. Thank you, Joe. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Take care.